Greetings, known world. I am Excellency Ramut Al Taiba, coming to you live from the Barony of Bronze Helm in the Kingdom of Artemisia, with the magical aid of Cowbard Corner Productions. With me today is Arcos Althina Athelina Gray. I'm so sorry. My apologies. No it's good. I have a lot of syllables. <laughs> it does. Would you please introduce yourself to our audience and give a little bit of your, your backstory, as it were? All righty. Uh, I'm Athelina Gray. I'm from, I'm currently in Seagirt, Barony of Seagirt, in the Principality of Thierry in Ontario. Uh, so that's up in Canada. It's up um, in Bang uh, Victoria, BC, which is on an island in the ocean. <laughs> on here. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where I'm from. Uh, originally from uh, the interior of BC, but uh, so Dane's Coom, uh, before it was Dane's Coom. Um, I joined about the year 2000. Um, and since then, uh, had to take some time off for various reasons, kind of was in and out for a bunch of years. And um, uh, I've had a bunch of offices. I've helped out with youth activities and thrown weapons and archery and uh, some other stuff. Dance uh, as a deputy chatelaine. And now I'm the principality archery officer for Thierry and I'm the verdict champion. All right. Um, and that being said, the views and opinions expressed are those of the participants and does not reflect any official policy or position of SCA Incorporated. Also, as a disclaimer, we may or may not use offensive language, just so you all know. <laughs> it's quite possible. It can happen at any moment. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> we have some amazing things to talk about today regarding retention. I'm, I'm really excited. Um, uh, Athlena and myself were, were just like, beep, 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 before the show. Yeah, so. and then we got distracted, and I started making little moose faces, and it made everybody very happy, but then we almost missed the start time. It, and this is, is very much a marker of, like, how my existence tends to be. <laughs> also, the, the moose faces, we now know that uh, Barony of Arnhold and Artemisia, their, yeah. their, their device like has a moose. You have, like, an entire moose barony. It's fantastic. Uh, it, it is a moose barony. They're, they're that's, pretty. That's so great. But we'll have to get you here somehow. Somehow. <laughs> <laughs> so the first aspect I like to talk to you about retention is your strategy for, hey, we've got this new person, this is their very first practice or their very first event. Now that they've got that under their belt, what the heck do we do with them now? Right? I mean, because, you know, they might come out once and then what happens? Um, so, I mean, usually if we have a demo or something, um, I like to try and remind folks that like, yeah, we got to make sure that we're supportive the practices after, but not just that one practice. You can't, you can't all kind of come out and be like, okay, we will support, you know, any potential new people just that one week right after your demo. Cause maybe someone got your info from the demo and they can't go that week or they went that week, but then maybe they want to try again in a couple weeks. So I find that that support kind of needs to be, you know, continual. It's gotta be something you've got kind of, you know, in the back of your mind as a community being like, okay, so maybe someone who went to that demo two months ago now has time to come out and see something. Are we gonna be able to support them if they show up? Well, it, and not every time that, you know, hey, you've gone to your first fight of practice, maybe you've gone to your first event and you've gotten, you know, a little peak, mm -hmm. but then I'm going to show up at a demo, but I've never done really, like, I don't have the breadth of knowledge that somebody who's played for a long time has. I, I may not have garb. I may not have whatever it is that this demo is catering towards. Yeah. And like, you know, if, if it's someone that came in from a demo who like we did a demo and then like, Oh, that thing, I want that. Like, I, I want to go try it. You know, like when we do those, um, it's nice to have something set up so that anybody who comes in can, you know, 
we can be like, okay, so what do you, you know, like, here's some options of things that mm -hmm. you might find fun. Let's get you involved in any of them if that's interesting. And then, you know, if they want to be involved in helping out, yeah, let them yeah. help out, right? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to that, hey, I've done my first event, my, my first demo, whatever, you know, I, I'm interested in the thing. What is, I guess, the way you kind of keep tabs on them to help them in the SCA? Like, what what strategy or technique would you recommend? I mean, I personally tend to do a lot of just, like, individual reaching out uh, on whatever kind of texty social media e thing. Uh, I get a lot of people who are like, hey, you know, I, I still don't have business cards or anything. So, you know, I'll exchange a phone number at a demo or mm -hmm. at like random practice or something. And then I'll check in with that person. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, how's it going? You know, we got a thing coming up on this day. Did you want to come? Uh, and that usually also goes along with, do you need a ride? And that's an important thing right there, because a lot of people take for granted the ability for individuals who want to participate that they may have the ability to get to an event without realizing that maybe they don't, that they want to go to an event, but they can't, they don't have a car, they don't have a license, they don't have gas, they don't have a tent, they don't, have a, they yeah. don't have a tent, they don't have a, a cot, or they don't have a sleeping bag, yeah, they don't have anything that's ready yeah. for a camping event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, just trying to find ways to Connect people with the stuff that they need to do the stuff that they want. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> well, and that's kind of, I mean, that's the easiest thing that we can do. Like mm -hmm. most of us who have played for a while have the extra stuff, you know, yep. most of us would be happy to have somebody play wingman if we have to drive solo to an event mm -hmm. because having somebody just to talk and fill that seat to keep us a little more awake and not into that road hypnosis yeah. I mean, that's helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody to, I don't know, maybe sing songs with. Um, mm, you know. Well, <laughs> as you are a, a champion bard, and mm -hmm. I, I do have to say there's quite a bit of discussion in our comments about um, your singing voice and your songs being amazing. And what? no, I, this is not what this is for, guys. <laughs> so also, I, I don't have it set so I can see comments right now. I'm trying to not get super distracted. But if you guys want to pop comments up every once in a while, that's cool. But I sing later, guys. This is not what this is. Uh, that said, I'm going to take a random, like, I'm just going to plug a random thing. Uh, we've got yeah. our, our Principality Bardic Championship coming up soon. <gasps> and, uh, you know, if you want me to sing for you, I suggest you uh, come uh, let me sing for you there. Oh, so we have to go to this event so that we can hear you sing. Except there's an online component this time. So, Ooh. so yeah. Anyhow, more information to follow, but not during this thing, because that's not what we're talking about. Well, I think we should put that, if you've got that information and give it to Cal in our converse, in a chat later, he'll pop that up and connect it to our Ooh. stream so that people can find that information. Ooh. He's really good at that. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, <laughs> yes, I will try to remember to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving back to retention, because, well, and Bardic is part of retention. Like that's really a, part of the SCA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are so many people who have mundane talents mm -hmm. that don't get utilized in the SCA or they get discounted in the SCA because it's yeah. never been applied in an SCA setting. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, I mean. You want to. Talk yeah, about this I've, uh, I mean, I, I've definitely encountered this both in um, me personally and also just kind of watching stuff happen around. Um, you know, people come into the archer, er, archery, <laughs> people come into the SCA from a wide range of places. Um, they, they all have backgrounds. They all have lives. Um, a lot of them have a lot of experience doing mm, stuff. Um, and sometimes that's a book. So, I mean, when I started, I mean, if we're talking retention, um, you know, one of the first things that I loved to do was dance. And then I was, you know, I was already studying music when I started, um, had been for a while. 
and then was off to university to, to continue studying music and get a degree in it. And I remember going to university and, you know, trying to find a, a way to connect with the local SCA group and being like, hey, you know, I, I, I'd like to participate in this musical group mm -hmm. that you've got locally. And they were like, well, no, you can't because you don't have enough SCA experience. Like you, you haven't sung in an SCA choir before, you don't know what you're doing. And I'm like, I'm a music major. Like I am literally spending all day, every day, day. steeping in <laughs> this. And I'm trying to do it for fun too, but like maybe <laughs> I won't. Uh, and, and, that, and so I ended up not. <laughs> which, had that been what drew you to the SCA, boom, you're out the door because now what you want to do, it, you've been told, nope, sorry, you've never done it before, so you can't do it. Yeah. And like, you know, uh, or things like, you know, someone comes in with uh, a background in photography or finances or whatever, and they're like, hey, doing the thing. And they notice very soon that we're short on volunteers because mm -hmm. mostly it's a bunch of us who do the volunteer stuff. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we kind of like, you know, switch her up yeah. between stuff, but especially in smaller groups, you get the same kind of handful of people just trying to make the stuff still happen. Yep. And there's certain things that you need to do in order to make an SCA branch happen. Definitely. And if someone comes in from outside and is like, Hey, you know, I went to this, this demo that you were guys, you guys were fighting in a park and, you know, I came out to your, like your one, like maybe rapier practice and mm -hmm. that was cool. And I'd like to pick up a sword. And then I happened to stumble into your council meeting and, oh my God, you need how many volunteers for what now? Okay. Uh, I could, you know, help you. Uh, you need a deputy X checker. Mm -hmm. The last thing that that person should be told is, well, you're too new. Yes. I don't, I mean, even if they have zero experience in this thing, but like a deputy role say, like, is a, a learning role. It's not yeah. like here, you're my deputy. You now have to do all the things that deputy role is kind of, let me try this. Let me see if I want to do this. Mm -hmm. I may only be a deputy for three months and decide this is not for me, but yeah. that deputy role is a, Hey, I'm interested in this. I'm curious. Let me job shadow you and see if it fits. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why would we say no to deputies? Yeah. Or like, you know, maybe you can give me a hand just literally typing in the archery scores because I find that hard to make myself actually do. Um, you know, like if, if if that's a thing that you can do, if you can just like pop on the archery site, you know, after a practice for five minutes. Or uh, here's my hand really written... helpful my handwritten notes to Seneschal, would you please type them up as my deputy right. and mail out my report for the month? Yeah. yeah. Boom. Yeah. Like getting, you know, helpers is fantastic. And the number of times I've seen someone be like, yes, I would love to help in, you know, uh, something, maybe this thing, maybe I have experience in it. And they just get, you know, completely shot down because mm -hmm. they're too new. They're not experienced in the right SCA kind of like jargon words. It, or, or special terms here and, uh, or know. they're too young or that mm -hmm. you know yeah. just because someone you know is maybe 18 mm -hmm. doesn't mean that they can't hold an office they yeah. per kapora they can hold an office yeah but people might discount the fact that they're so young but they are maybe a second or a third gen sca member or alternately you know some people you know, 18, they're super on top of everything. And maybe that is honestly going to be the most engaged officer you've had Ever. in that role in like a decade. So, you know. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. And, um, I mean, you know, I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to like tangent from there. Do um, it. <laughs> so talking about younger officers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, at the university clubs, the university medieval clubs, uh, you get people being in charge of the club sometimes. They're not legal age yet. They're not the age of majority yet. Mm -hmm. They're still running a university or 
student society uh, group mm -hmm. and doing it effectively and, you know, making stuff happen. Um, and, you know, you can get a lot of experience doing that too. And, uh, you know, I, I know, I, I want to say that a lot of the folks that, that come in because they're interested in the university stuff, mm -hmm. uh, end up being, you know, some of the most engaged officers. Definitely. Um, even if they don't have the SCA side experience, I mean, they definitely have a, sometimes a, a better drive to yeah. succeed in what they're doing because they're, yeah. they're they, you know, yes, they might be going to college not by choice or university by choice, but by, you know, requirements socially. Yeah. yeah. But they find that passion in the SCA and they're driven to excel in it. Yeah. 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 I mean, you get a certain sort of uh, vibrancy. I guess, from being like, hey, there's a thing. It's cool. I want to help and get a sense of like, you know, feels nice to help. Uh, and, you know, that that vibrancy uh, can make fantastic officers no matter what. It is contagious <laughs> as heck. Like if you're excited and passionate and vibrant about things, like it's not boring. Yeah. People you can pay more attention. Up, like adjacent bits of the skills or how stuff works or whatever that's applicable to that thing but you know the key is like actually wanting to do it definitely <laughs> if you're doing something you don't want to do nobody wants to do it with you mm -hmm. you have to you have to have that that spark yeah <laughs> and i mean even uh, i mean i think there are at this point probably a at least a handful of officers in the SCA who probably don't want to be doing at least all of the parts of their job. And yeah, that, that it's hard. I mean, even in my position, it's, I find parts of it real hard to just hack through and do. Mm -hmm. And, but like, I still want to, it's not that like, I hate doing the thing. Mm -hmm. It's that it's work. Mm -hmm. It's work to make it so that the thing can happen for everybody. Yes. And, and it's um, appreciated. And that's the other thing. Yeah. I I think part of her attention is addressing the how grateful people are when individuals fill those service roles or fill those officer. Like yeah. people don't say, thank you, I'm grateful enough. And it kind of puts a tarnish on yeah. doing it. I hear you know? a lot of like someone steps up into new officer position and the majority of the comments are ha ha sucker yeah that is not a helpful way to no. to um make a community in general feel like doing the thing to make the thing keep going is valued i mean yeah. even if we can like dissect that socially and say okay they're sassing their buddy maybe they have a long-term relationship or whatever and they know it's going to be a lot of work or whatever you know, sometimes the words that we use, that we use, even if we don't mean them to be mean, they still, and maybe that person doesn't take it as anything mean, but maybe other people hear that take it as and are mean. like, okay, so if I wanted to volunteer as an officer or even just to help out, that is a ha ha sucker thing. Mm hmm. Which means probably I don't want to get involved in that. Exactly. Which kind of leads into the, the words we choose sometimes have a way of diminishing and tarnishing and damaging retention and yeah. participation in the SCA. Yeah, I think that's a thing that probably all of us can work on a bit. I mean, Go back to the don't be a dick thing. Don't be a dick. Um, <laughs> but like what that looks like for one person isn't necessarily mm -hmm. what's where someone's, uh, you know, threshold for, you know, having an interaction and being like, no, nah, that's fine. Might not be the same, th might not look the same as it does for someone who maybe has some other stuff going on or whatever and you know sometimes the things that we say can be 
yeah. like inadvertently make it hard for people to want to participate. Well, Even if we don't mean to be a dick, you know, we can always kind of learn and grow and get better. Well, and we all react differently because regardless of, of neurotypical or neurodivergent, mm-hmm. our interpretations of whatever message or media that comes our way, we filter it through our perspective and apply mm-hmm our rules to it. So somebody might have intended to give a compliment, but our filter says, wow, that, that was snarky and mean. Yeah. Oh gosh. You know, and they take it that way. They take it to heart and take it very personal because we're human. But yeah, we're, I, we're- I've absolutely had that happen to me. Uh, you know, someone not intending to be mean at all uh, was like, okay, you know, we, we should, you know, let's, uh, this was after I, I moved locations uh, and I had my one piece of garb with me and went out to a, a, a gathering and uh, they were talking. It was one of the newcomers like um, chat kind of how stuff works things. And, you know, since I had just come from a different place, I was going to the newcomer things. So I go in garb. Pardon me. And they, um, you know, this person's like, OK, I want to show a. a an example of someone who's, you know, trying to do some garb. And so they get me to like stand up and I'm wearing a blio and like, there's, it, it's a blio. It's fine. It, the construction's fine. It's a blio. Yeah. It's made out of a bed sheet, but you know what? It was a cotton bed sheet. Um, and honestly, that doesn't matter. You nope. had trim on it and like, it was cute. And, and so, and, and really, you know, a blio i still wear it um so i stand up and i'm like okay you know here's a blio and because i was new uh to that area the person didn't know i mean they're not a person who really studies 12th century fashion and again doesn't really matter but they're like okay yeah so what we can see here is this person is clearly like at least making an attempt at like, you know, this is kind of like a blio. It's it's they're trying. They're this is really trying to be a blio. And I hate to say it, but like, it was a blio, and now you're kind of accidentally shitting on guy? my one piece of garb that is actually fancy that I brought and am literally demonstrating for the rest of everybody so they can see you know what a garb is that is you know actually a style that is a garb and i actually tried and so rather than this person saying you know trying and attempting they could have simply just said and this is a you know blio yeah, or he's made. Okay, you know, so or, or you know they have made. this person's wearing some garb. Can you tell us about your garb? Yes, which is the best because it allows you to self advocate, you know, for your efforts. Yeah. And yeah. and share the education that you learned and the skills you learned and utilized and put into that creation. Yeah. And you know, anybody like doesn't matter what they're wearing. Um, if, if they're pajama pants and a tunic that they really, you know, did, that's their first time using a sewing machine and like the bobbin wouldn't wind right. And it's got like that little snarly bobbin stuff poking out of the hem Mm -hmm. and, you know, whatever. And so they come to an event and that, and the last thing I want is for that person to get any kind of comment on their garb that is negative because they're going to be like, well, shit, I tried. I'm going to give them a freaking high five and a hell yeah, because yeah. they did something new. They yeah. did something different and they did something that if you don't have the time and effort and the training, you don't know what you're doing. You're, mm-hmm. you're baby stepping it. And how yeah. do we all start out? We all suck at the beginning. We're never instantly pff, magically yeah. out of the, the, the womb. I can walk, I can talk, I can, you know, work an abacus and a computer you know, simultaneously. Like, like, you know, you don't, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not how that one works. Um, but yeah, I mean, and like someone might not know. A lot of people might not know. Yeah. Someone shows up in some kind of hack together tunic and and pajama pants 
and uh, some slippers. Mm -hmm. And you know what? We should not be shitting on them. No, they're they're there. You know, we should be happy that they're like, there. Hey, tell me about your tunic. You know? Yeah. Like, cool. Good to see you here. You know, exactly. It, yes, yes. Thank you. There is yeah. no place for arrogance in our art. Now, yes. that being said, if I'm going to enter my very first piece like that in an arts and science competition, it should have in my documentation. I'm a novice. This is my very first thing I've ever sewn. Skills I had to learn. I had to learn how to work a sewing machine. As I, you can I see. Said that. What is tension? Yeah. Um, but yeah. you still shouldn't destroy that person for their. No. And, and take it as a nurturing opportunity. Hey, I see yeah. that you made this. This is really great for your first, you know, go at it. Are you going to do it again? That's yeah. what I want to hear. Yeah. What, and I what, mean, did, what, what did you learn on this that you're going to do different next time? Yeah. And I mean, that's also sort of on the, the folks organizing those kinds of competitions where like, okay, so what happens if someone does show up and, you know, they, they really want to say Bardic, they want to, they want to do Rose Red. They want to like go out there, sing Rose Red, maybe have a couple of their friends mm -hmm. sing with them. Okay. Maybe that isn't what we would usually think of as a competition thing. And you know what? It's still like, it's still them contributing to that thing happening and make a tournament that allows for them to feel some success. Definitely. Right? We want to, like, we want to help each other succeed. Yeah. We want to help mentor each other. We don't want to, we don't want to be that villain in someone's book if we can help it. Yes, it's going to happen regardless because that, that's the nature of human life. Yep. But if we can do everything we can do to help them make their goals in the SCA to help make their dream come true, then we're doing what we should be doing. Yeah. 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 I mean, just uh, find a way to, you know, see what folks want to do, what makes them happy and, and vibrant and, you know, you, you know, what makes their heart sing. Right. Mm -hmm. And find a way to help enable them to do that thing. Whether it's just like, Hey, you know, I'm going to practice. Anyone need a ride from this neighborhood? You know, does anyone from the university need a ride, you know, to, to archery because it's out somewhere that you can't get to by bus? Mm -hmm. um, you know, that kind of thing. Um, Ooh. Yeah. There is a, a comment from Angela Gallant. Um, oh, hi. There, there are too many tournaments, especially Bardic, where the winner is because they stepped up and they were the only entry. This and this is kind of a tangent that's kind of a, a itchy thing for me because mm -hmm. there are many opportunities. That, in fact, not a lot of people will put themselves out there and won't enter because they're afraid of what will happen, how they might receive feedback and yeah. don't want to deal with it. And so you sometimes will have only one person enter in a competition, whether it's Bardic, whether it's thrown weapons, whether yep. it's arts and science, you know, yep. it could be archery. Yep. yep. All of them. I mean, yeah. Because like, if you don't think that you can hit the target, why would you do it? Anyhow, I wasn't even planning on going out of this tangent. And people know this is one of my bigger so. Oh. But well, um, anyhow. I, I'm also a have... bardic champion. And I can say oh, that, uh, but just for the barony. <laughs> yeah, just for the barony. Uh, a, a bronze home. Until next Friday night, actually this coming Friday night, Ooh. when um, at the campfire, the Bardic will commence mm -hmm. and their excellencies will choose a new Bard of Bronze Home. Um, and my final performance as Bard of Bronze Home will happen oh. for this particular term because I'm probably going to do it again. Um, <laughs> but there was very little entries. I think it was between myself and two other people, which is heartbreaking. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and it's difficult when there's two people, three people, super difficult. When there's 10 people, maybe it's a little easier. Well, I mean, I it's mean, still difficult. Until you get enough people that you uh, have like logistical scheduling uh, complications. Because, yes. <laughs> you know. 
Well, but, it, it, and that's when you have to use other, rather than one night to do the Bardic, there's mm -hmm. several times at several events or online format where yeah, people can enter. There's lots of ways that we can, we can arrange things to, to accommodate stuff. And yeah, uh, you know, I, I, I like, I mean, one of my geeks out is, is um, curriculum design and, uh, and, uh, how to uh, make uh, kind of sideways into teaching here. I have a teaching degree. Mm -hmm. um, how to how to make an assessment that is at a level looking at you know what are people going to find fun to do? What do they want to do? What mm -hmm. do they want to show off? Where are they at? What's their stuff that like mm -hmm. they are contributing for vibrancy? And you know I'm not gonna try and make people do like. Uh, fourth year university level juried performance probably unless that's what they're into uh but i mean like i might like that but that doesn't mean that you know and folks around are gonna want to buy into that and so one of the things that i try and do whether it's for archery or thrown weapons or bardic or dance or whatever if i'm running mm -hmm. a, a thing whether it's a competition or a class or whatever is kind of try and make the whatever it is like fun and challenging and uh, something that people want to buy into and have fun doing mm -hmm. you know what it's a hobby it is a hobby <laughs> we're doing this for funsies we chose uh, to do this we chose to have it you know something that, that we're passionate about yes. and let's not make it so impossibly difficult that nobody's going to have fun because nobody wants yeah. to do it. But at the same time, if someone wants to give me a hundred pages, um, like, I don't know, Bernard de Ventadorn and like some of his cultural interactions that make this one piece that he wrote, this like satirical, brilliant, you know what? I would I would love for someone to like dive down the the deep oh. rabbit hole and and fling that at me for a competition, but Definitely. also only if they want to. And there's a whole lot more out there. Right? But here's the other caveat to that: only if they want to, and only if they understand that time limits may only allow you to have that submission if you get it two weeks in advance. Yeah, being reasonable about what we ask our volunteers to do is also a big part of retention. Yes. <laughs> oh, and we have a good, another good question. You guys are amazing Ooh. tonight. Alex Melhouse. I'm going to have to watch all the chat for this after. Well, look, Alex Melhouse says, good evening, all. Do you think that the forced COVID hiatus has been a factor in reduction of entries? Personally, I consider myself borderline feral coming out after years of not eventing. Um, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I, I I think we are. We're, we're, when it comes to being feral from kind of, you know, quarantine and restrictions, yeah. we are more sensitive emotionally because we haven't had as many people around us. Um, sensory wise, our, we haven't had all the noise of all the people. We haven't had the, the, you know, fire smell. We haven't had the drumming. We haven't had, you know, Pounding camp. Tent eggs. Yeah, but there are so many factors that come into going to an event mm -hmm. and, and then having to throw in a competition where there is potentially stress involved. Potential stress, potential like... It could be know, injury, it could be... Could be injury, could be like... Fatigue, you, know, you haven't fatigue, done that. Being I mean, worried about feedback, you know. If you haven't toted your armor and then fought for multiple hours nonstop... For the last you know four years and or two years and now you're suddenly yeah. doing it like you're going to be tired if you haven't pulled an arrow you know or, or a bowstring all day long in the heat mm -hmm. and forgetting about what that's like and how it affects yeah. your not only your shoulder and your arm but your 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 spine your neck your hips and, your knees and, your feet yeah and where's your mental game at and how's that going to be mm -hmm. affected by putting strain on yourself that you haven't been doing in a while. Yeah, a lot of people are going to want to be like, I'm going to not do the thing that is potentially socially challenging or physically challenging or whatever. I mean, my brain was on Bardic, but pro like anything that has a risk of failure, 
or mm -hmm. risk of maybe not having a fantastic time because I don't know, maybe it's too sunny and you forgot sunscreen and now mm -hmm. you're kind of burned and you feel wibbly because you didn't. So like, yes, I mean, there's a lot of trying to remember how Definitely. to do stuff. Well, and then, and, and heaven forbid you did get COVID. Yeah. You now have reduced potential lung capacity that you're struggling still to get back mm -hmm. or you have long haul COVID. So you have maybe, you know, absent mind kind of moments, mm -hmm. the COVID fog. So yeah, all those words and or whatever, all the, all the words in a song or a poem or a story, suddenly you can't, you think you got it all and then you go to perform and you can't. Yeah. So now you don't want to because you're afraid that moment you'll have to stop and look. Yeah. You know, or, you know, maybe you can't hack walking out to retrieve arrows mm -hmm. over and over and over and over again on uneven ground in the sun. And you know what? We should maybe offer to help you. Yeah. Um, and that's another another kind of main thing that I'd like to see more of is folks helping each other, supporting each other when they can't do the same level of engagement mm -hmm. that maybe they're known for. So whether that's injury, whether that's, um, you know, life happened, they had a change in their job, maybe their finances are, they, they can't afford to drive a long time with the gas and the, yeah, um, maybe their health isn't, you know, they've got a complication there um, and they can't do the thing that used to be their thing that is mm -hmm. like, who want to do that? Maybe they can, you know, their, their work shift changed and they can not really make weekends anymore right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe they've got kids and they don't feel comfortable taking them to events right now. Um, mm -hmm. Or the kid has soccer practice uh, on Sundays. And mm -hmm. so you always got to go to that because go you, but <laughs> also then maybe you can't make practice. Uh, you know, you can't go to like heavy practice or whatever. Um, and I find that a lot of the time, anytime someone has life happen, mm -hmm. uh, that makes them step back from the SCA, even just a little bit, even if it's like they've been an officer for 10 years and now they're not mm -hmm. like anytime they step back, they become invisible. Yeah. And that. I mean, eh, kind of a basic psychology. They're not going to feel needed like a part of the group. They're not going to feel it. like folks want them to come out. They're not going to feel supported if they have more challenging stuff happening. If they wanted to try and put in the extra effort that it now takes to come and do the thing, like they're not going to feel supported. They're going to feel invisible. And well, it, like us to try and, you know, reach out to folks. And Not even necessarily like our closest buddies, but like the people that you can kind of remember seeing mm -hmm. sometimes. Like Maybe they come to one event a year, but like, and if they, they can, year? and if they only go to the one event that year, make it your mission to go up to them at some point and be like, "I am so glad you are here. I have missed you. How have you been? Mm -hmm. You know, and don't don't make it. You know, like." I've missed you because you haven't been here in X number of years because blah, blah, blah. blah. Just treat them like a, the friend that you haven't seen in a while. Yeah. You're just saying hi. Like, you hey, know, you are fabulous. This is great. I, I, I'm I, happy that I get to bask in your fabulousness. And then find somebody that is new and introduce them to that person. Mm -hmm. And yeah. say, you know, here is so-and-so who happens to be an incredible historical, you know, heraldic, yeah. you know, herald. If you want to know about names in Germany and the 700s, this yeah. is the herald that will help you pick that name. Mm -hmm. Or you want to know how to do, you know, gold work embroidery. This artisan here, she's done it forever. <laughs> like it's, it takes two seconds and then boom. And as long as you know kind of what that new person's interested in because you've asked it, that person who's returning, you know what they do. Bec yes, do heraldry. Um. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Squirrel. So 
if anyone finds a newcomer who's interested in heraldry, throw them at Angela. Oh, <laughs> Angela, I, I, I don't know you, but I feel like I should. I heart you. <laughs> I think you should. Angela is fabulous. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, they did that. Somebody did that just yesterday. Uh, Timmy Lynn uh, Lightfellow. Tim. Hi, Tim. <laughs> I, I've switched to the oh, thing where Tim. I can see comments. <laughs> I, ah. I feel like it's okay for me to get slightly distracted now. Yeah, it's, it's perfectly oh. okay. Yeah. That's great. Uh, and the the people in any martial or non-martial field who have done it for quite a while and then step aside, regardless of how long their hiatus, they are the best resource sometimes to put with a new person to be mm -hmm. like, hey, I, I know you've been gone for a while, but I've got this new person who's super interested in this X, Y, Z subject. You're really great at this. You know, mm -hmm. are you okay? Would you be willing to help them? And sometimes they're suddenly new best friends. Mm -hmm. Oh, Morgan! <laughs> you have squeaking? Yeah, Morgan. Uh... Oh, hi, Morgan. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I, I'm fangirling, squeaking. Sorry, <laughs> that's cool. That's that's that that's how the Morgan do. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then we have another good comment from Alex. One thing I do for self care each event I go to, I make a point to meet uh, a new to me person and leave uh, having made a friend. Amazing how it adds up over the years. And it. Yep. I do the it, same thing. I try to perfect. I try to add a person to my mental log of of humans that I have a file on. And it <laughs> might not it, it yeah. could be just the name or it could be just the face or it could be a name yeah. and a face or yeah, it like could that be that person over there for whatever reason I've decided that they are the person I'm going to add to my brain today cuz other I don't remember the things or the people and mm -hmm. you know what just trying to be like okay I'm a continually add a new you know something and who knows we might have like no real interest in the same things but maybe i can con help connect them with a person who you know can help them with the thing or they can connect me with someone awesome or or yeah. maybe mundanely you have something super in common and <laughs> don't have anything at all in common in the SCA and now you finally found an SCA person where you can have that moment of real life like hey outside of of SCA yep. you and I both happen to be counselors and, and blah 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 you know this is what I'm seeing as a trend what are you seeing and do you ever feel like you need to have a, your own counselor while you're being a counselor for someone because you know you know those that can happen you can find somebody that loves roller derby and you love roller derby but in the sca absolutely nothing you know it happens <laughs> Ooh, oh, more comments more comments holy cow yeah um <laughs> yeah i mean you know and i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you that i i just saw uh, morgan's mm -hmm. comment about the events being smaller and yeah i mean when i go to events now i I will be wearing a mask the full mm -hmm. time. Um, I help my mom out and her health is of a sort that would not interact very well with any kind of viral stuff. So mm -hmm. um, like, you know, I'm gonna be masked and very careful and mm -hmm. a lot less huggy. And sorry for that folks, but also like we gotta be aware of that. That's, that's now a part of how some folks are gonna be interacting. I, and like okay we we should allow each other with, grace right like well I, not everybody likes to be hugged anyways regardless of covid so yeah. asking you know hey are you accepting hugs high fives elbow punch air you know whatever yeah. that's great um but give somebody that space and grace and allow them what they need yeah like and i mean even That's, if they need more space or maybe mm -hmm. they can't go to indoor events mm -hmm. or whatever, like still say hi, connect with them, be like, okay, well, I see that they can't go to that event, mm -hmm. but like, hey, buddy, you know, um, 
you know, say hi to them online or something like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I do try to spend uh, some time just randomly being like, hey, random person who is on my friends list. You're cool. <laughs> I can remember you exist. And mm-hmm. and I would love to hang out sometime. But also I am busy and much more careful now. But, you know, I still love you. And, you know, just the like tiny check ins. Yes. And being like, yes, you know, the, the micro here, social transactions here. that yeah. are kind of you, you can have the great big, you know, in person interactions, but without some of those micro interactions, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, and those kind of sometimes mean more <laughs> and, yeah. and depending on who you are, like I, I was honest and I posted on Facebook, I was depressed mm-hmm. for the beginning part through most of the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had a friend and the reason why I realized I was depressed because they were like, are you okay? You haven't been acting normal. Now, this is not a friend I see every day. It's not a friend that I talk to every day, mm-hmm. but just randomly reached out and was like, are you okay? <laughs> and I was like, oh gosh, mm-hmm. no, I haven't done the things lately because I haven't wanted to do the things lately. I've had no motivation and mm-hmm. no wherewithal. And oh gosh, thank you for reaching out to me. Yeah. I, you know, and I, had they not done that, probably would still be in the same funk because nobody recognized the fact that I was depressed. Yeah. I didn't even know I was depressed. Right. I mean, I didn't recognize things- you know, sometimes it's just stuff piles up or something mm-hmm. goes sideways or you're like, I am not dealing with this this week mm-hmm. or whatever. And, you know, just. But that little micro. My, yeah. Yeah. It, it can fix or change somebody's perspective. Like it made me think, am I depressed? Am I OK? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I haven't done this. I haven't done this. I haven't done this. Oh, gosh. Why? What, what's the root of this problem, you know? And I mean, a part of this also is not then trying to say, okay, buddy who is depressed, how about you like, and you're finding it hard to do the things, mm-hmm. uh, you should, you should stop doing the things so you're not as overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Like not necessarily going to be helpful. I mean, managing the amount of stuff on our plates is a thing that a lot of us struggle with. And Mm -hmm. you know what, like (sighs) telling people that they should stop being uh, active or involved, even if they're struggling with the thing that they're being active involved about, Mm -hmm. um, telling them to stop doing it because it's clearly stressful is also not helpful. No. In fact, like, had they that person given more feedback than, are you okay? And, mm-hmm. and you know, yeah. was like, let me, what, why, why do you say that? And then said, well, I just noticed you weren't doing all the things that you normally do. Yeah. Yeah. And left it at that. That left me that, oh, you're right. And then I allowed me to assess what was causing me to feel overwhelmed that I was withdrawing into, like, I was depressed from the being overwhelmed. And what did I need to change in my life? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh. checking in without pressure. Yes. Is, well, and, a good thing. and there's definitely like looking at all the comments, like uh, Morgan says, you know, I've, she's noticed since COVID that the events at Avacol are much smaller and that's okay. It makes it easier to connect with people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us, that's what we need right now, because having that need to have a huge, massive event with everybody that we haven't seen all in the same place is overwhelming to a lot of us. Many people at once. I mean, like I I can, they're kind of over there and I'm like, that's fine. I have my thing that I'm doing. I'm getting Mm -hmm. my stuff done and I will curl up and be a turtle uh, with like you know, a couple of people that I can be a semi-feral me with uh, yeah. safely yeah. and uh, who I know are not going to be pushing me in in, in various mm-hmm. ways. And they're, they're going to, it's going to be a nice safe space. Yes. And I mean, for retention, I think that's going to be something if we can all kind of try to extend some care and grace and compassion to people, 
you know, there's going to be a whole lot of new variables going on that we so don't many. know. And, you know, we've got a big blank as far as what's been happening in anybody's <laughs> life are the last, cool. like, yes, turtles are cool uh, in the last, like, <laughs> you know, some odd years. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know what those stories are. No, in, in fact, I was so talking. Try to be supportive and don't shit on people. Definitely. And, th and this doesn't just SEA, like it's it's overall, don't shit on people. Um, I was talking with some of my friends mundanely that are in the mental health profession. And they were saying there are so many new syndromes, disorders, reactions, just from this unprecedented life event that has happened to everybody that's affecting everybody in multiple different ways. <laughs> That, I mean, it, it's definitely going to have a, a, a large rolling effect yep. so that we definitely need to be very cognizant to allow that space and that grace yeah. and be yeah. gentle with each other and ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, anytime we go back into doing the thing, I mean, yes, enthusiasm is <laughs> fantastic, uh, but also... <laughs> gentle enthusiasm it's like if you break a limb and you're in a cast for you know three months or you know two months whatever mm -hmm. and they take the cast off they don't want you going back full tilt into the activity that made you break yourself in the first place right baby steps yeah. you're gently, a... do your physio exactly you know, do the things you need to do to look after yourself if you gotta and ice try to actively ice. remember how to do those things when it's like relative to things like events or being mm -hmm. around more people than you're used to or whatever. Like, you know, okay, so I used to be fine with going nonstop from seven in the morning until 11 at night. Um, I can't now. Now and, I want to sleep at eight. <laughs> and like, you know, what do I need to do to mm -hmm. remember mm -hmm. what I need to do to look after mm -hmm. myself? Because, you know, I haven't completely updated my mental programming of what mm -hmm. required self-care looks like. Uh, I'm still working on updating my programming. And I think a lot of people, you know, first time you come back out to uh, something in the sun, oopsie doodle, did not bring enough water, uh, stayed in sun too oh. long, didn't take enough breaks, and now have heat exhaustion. Um, and, or forgot you know, sunscreen and experienced a... Like, yeah. third degree burn uh, like from being yeah. in the sun all day long at a different altitude than you're used to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, <sighs> just trying to remember how to do the things and make those adjustments, like actively <laughs> think about what adjustments you need to make so that you're not going to end up completely tapped out. Cause maybe, maybe you had like, imagine health bars, uh, maybe your health bar for like social interaction used to be this big. Well, maybe is it still there? Mm. Maybe it is not. And also maybe other people's aren't. So as much as you want to be super duper sociable and all the people like, I mean, if that's what you want to do, they might not have the same health bars for that. So you know, try to extend like a care and gentle grace. If they're like, I like seeing you. Hi, buddy. I haven't seen you in a while. You're fantastic, but I need to not, I need to go hide. Yeah. And, and, and if somebody does that, you let them go hide. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. if you see somebody doing that look that you know, you know that look because you feel it inside, help them. Hey, psst, and, you need to go over here, away from people, there's this really cool quiet spot I found that I scoped out earlier so that I could go hide when I get overwhelmed. You want to go? Mm -hmm. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, and I see a lot of places, a lot of events building in a quiet space now. Yes. Um, which is, or like uh, a lower sensory space. Um, yes. So, you know, that kind of stuff is, is really helpful. Um, well, and no, Tim, I wasn't calling you out specifically. The number of people that I've been around who have had sun-related issues lately uh is lots and, and i wasn't calling you out tim because um you can ask uh our, our producer that i may have um gotten a really 
bad, bad sunburn. And I don't know if you notice what color I am, but I have like no melanin in my skin, unfortunately. <laughs> it's I just have in a, my I hair. I have a condition that like my immune system eats the, the melanin producing cells. So, so um, I sunburn like if I don't sunscreen up and I don't tan afterwards, it just... <laughs> turns into a nasty peel into back pasty translucent skin. So our sh my show producer got to see a, a, a picture that I sent them of what lobster Rama looks like. It was yeah. humorous. So I, I, that was me. I, I'm sure Al Althina has also like <laughs> dealt with the same issue. The don't drink water or you're out in the heat too long. We all yep. get it. Yep. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, just helping support folks as much as you can and like check in on, on buddies, check in on people who maybe even you don't necessarily like, maybe they're not like actual buddy level. Maybe they're just like this person that used to come to the things. Well, where do they go? Yeah. And it doesn't take a lot in retention. Sometimes mm -hmm. it is those micro interactions. Sometimes mm -hmm. it is that just allowing people to do their own self-care, allowing people that, that wiggle room and grace mm -hmm. to do what they need to do, uh, you know, making people feel wanted and needed by just small reaching out and not discounting who they are and what their background is and then allowing them to try something new because that's really how we all started this. Yeah. Yeah. Give them a chance to shine. Uh, give them a chance to be enthused. So we're coming up on our hour. Yep. It's time to do the shout out. And we had discussed before the show mm -hmm. about who we wanted to shout out. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Yeah. I'm, I'd like to put a shout out to kind of a bunch of the folks that I've kind of been talking about. And those are the folks that are still here. But they're the folks who maybe can only go to one event a year. They're the folks who maybe can't go to practices now because their work schedule changed, but they're still here. The people who maybe sustained an injury or a health change and can't do the thing that they kind of were known for doing and they're trying to figure out what they're doing now and, and how they fit in, but they're still here. I wanna give a shout out to them. I wanna give a shout out to the folks who Maybe they've got to, you know, look after the kids and they can't come to the event. Um, you know, they're still here. So I want to give that a shout out to all the folks who are still here. Perfect. Um, I don't I, I, I don't have a shout out that uh, I think is as relevant and as important as that, Alethina. Um, but I, I, I've got to. I'm going to back uh, piggyback onto that, like. We, we do see you. We know you're there and thank you. <laughs> every moment for everything you've ever volunteered and continue to volunteer for, mm -hmm. for everything that, you know, you do, whether it's a picture, a smile, uh, mm -hmm. you know, passing a water bottle, you know, whether it's, you know, you're just sitting and watching and, and enjoying archery, whether it's your, you know, uh, marshalling because you can't fight. You know, mm -hmm. all of that, we, we see you and we thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I mean, even for the stuff that we don't specifically see that one thing, mm -hmm. like we're aware mm -hmm. that there are people out there who maybe like, I don't specifically see, or mm -hmm. I forget that I see, but I try to remember that I see. And uh, I'd like to to get everybody to try and remember to look for those folks. Yep, definitely. All right. Um, thank you so much for being my guest. You are incredible. Thank um, you for having me. I, I'm going to I'm going to find a way to come up to an event up in your deck of the woods because I I think it would we be. We can amazing. stay in touch and attempt to like. Get well. Somewhere. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've got travel plans for a couple different places. Like, you know, Avacal is actually really close for me. It's like only mm -hmm. a, a, like, I think a 10 hour drive for me. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> yep, Avocal. I still, I'm going to make it up there, Morgan. I swear. We, I we swear. Do be, we do be neighbors. <laughs> 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 Angela's trying to kidnap y'all to uh, to the Arts and Sciences and Bardic event. Uh, I think just um, um, Well, that's not going to happen this year, but I could try to get it to happen next year, maybe. Ooh. <laughs> 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 yeah, we will we will figure a thing out and i mean that's one of the fabulous things that's happened in the last couple of years is yeah. making all of these connections that before it was mostly like you show up you were physically mm -hmm. in a place with some people and that's the people yep. who you know and, and that's the people who you interact with and are inspired by and it's we have so many options now yes. and we've been getting to know those uh, like just the there's a lot more out there so hi uh you're out there and <laughs> and and yay you are now in my mental file of folks who are here excellent well coming up soon on cal bard's corner for coffee with cal on the 14th of august we have modern leadership with prince axel should be a wonderful show um we're not going to plug a next show for Road to Retention, but we're not done with Road to Retention. Um, made a decision to allow me to do some more things I want to do uh -huh. and free up some more time for me to do those things. But we've decided to hold off having a show until um, the 4th of September. Uh, and we're going to tentatively do a, a once a month format, similar to the Look Inside. Um, but never fear, this is a road that's always going to need to be locked and we're not going to stop. So if you need to find out what's going on with uh, Cal Barter, you can find him at, at Cal Barter on uh, TikTok. Dun, da, da. If you want to see what I'm doing, although I almost never use TikTok to post anymore, I just use it to collect mini ideas. You can try me at Gina Kits. Um, if you want to support uh, Cal Bard's Productions. You can support us on Patreon forward slash KK Productions. Or if you want some cool merch, you could also get some really cool merch at Redbubble. There's some awesome stickers. I put them all over everything. Water bottles, notebooks. One time I stuck it on my kid's forehead. He didn't think it was funny. The trauma onion on my kid's forehead. Eh, I thought it was funny. Uh, <laughs> but you could definitely do that. It's been amazing. Thank you so much for being on the show. Um, and obviously we're going to stay in touch because now I have to go up yeah. to yeah. BC. It was really <laughs> fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> I, maybe I can fly with my bow. I wonder. I'll have to look into the rules for flying with my bow. Yeah, there are to ways to do that that block. are safer than others and more allowed than others. I'll, I'll look into it. I'll, I'll figure it out. Thank you, everybody. Thank you once again.